Y'all, I learned how to do a new paper bead this week. Well, new to me. This was something I'd not seen before, and I thought I had pretty much seen them all. But this came up in my um, YouTube suggested videos, you know, stuff we thought you might be interested in. And I watched a couple of these videos. I'll try to remember to put links to those gals that I watched because um, they can probably do a much better job of explaining it than I can. <laughs> but I'm going to try. Okay, these are fun um, pillow beads. Did I say that? Yeah, pillow beads. And they can be kind of, you know, flat. Or you can mush them up like a little pillow. You can make them even more pillowy. Or if you use lots of layers, they get to be like almost round and, and firm. So these are just really cool and they're not difficult. I'm going to show you. Um, okay. The size of the bead and the look that you get, there are lots of variables that determine that. Um, one is the, the width of the triangle that you use. Another is the length of it. When I say triangle, I'm talking about, you know, paper bead strip. The length, um, the width determines how your bead's going to look. The length determines it. Also, the weight of your paper. So it's really hard for me to say if you use a, a one-inch triangle that is 11 inches long, you're going to get this look. Okay, that's true if you're using this paper, but if you have a different paper that's a different weight, you know, it's either heavier or lighter weight, you're going to get a different look. So that's kind of the fun thing about using recycled papers with these beads, because you can experiment and then you don't feel bad if they don't turn out the way you want, right? I'm going to use some of this color paper when I show you how to make these, just so you can see better. But normally, I'm going to make them out of stuff like this. These are some that I've made recently. They were pages out of a Flow magazine. I had already harvested all of the images that I wanted and just had leftover paper. And typically, there are three different types of paper in each Flow magazine. They usually have a glossy paper section at the back of the magazine, and the front is still kind of a lightly coated paper, but more matte than the back ones. And then in the middle, there's usually a section of uncoated kind of rough paper. So, I, you know, even in one magazine, my beads will have three different looks if, you know, when using all those papers. And that's why some of these beads are not real consistent in size and shape because I didn't pay attention. I just mixed the papers, but that's okay because I like that. But yeah, use recycled papers. Papers like this, if you want like really long papers and don't want to have to piece your triangles together, look for staple bound magazines. Because then, see this is one sheet of paper. You pull it out, you've got this super long piece, so you get an extra long triangle. Even junk mail. I got this flyer. Um, Taste of Texas this doesn't realize that we're not in Texas anymore, I guess, because or they don't care. <laughs> but they've got this fold-out flyer that's extra long. So, you know, just, just think outside the box for papers. You don't need anything fancy. I mean, you can certainly use actual bead papers. There's some beautiful ones available on Etsy. Um, but you don't need to. So, okay, before we get too far, let's have a geometry lesson, just real quick. I normally make my paper beads out of strips of scrap paper because that's what I have on hand. I mean, sometimes I'll take an entire magazine and, and or entire magazine page and, and um, make a grid for my beads, but usually it's strips. So let's say I have a one inch strip. It would be nice if I had one in front of me, but I don't. Let's just pretend. Here, let me move out so you can see. Okay. If you have a one inch strip of paper, one inch is wide by however long, doesn't matter, you cut it corner to corner, you're going to end up with two one inch right triangles, right? Makes sense. This is a 90 degree angle, two right triangles. 
This is mostly what I use just because of the ease in cutting, but right triangles most of the time are not ideal for paper, paper beads. What you want is an isosceles triangle. You can see that in these two triangles you got the nice right angle here, but this side is a wee bit longer than this side because it's angled out. In an isosceles triangle, the two sides are exactly the same. So if you start off with a strip, this is the midpoint, the half inch point. You cut here, you cut here. What you're going to end up with are two half inch right triangles, so those two right there, and one one inch isosceles. And that means, you know, these are not right angles, but these two legs are exactly the same length. This is the ideal um, triangle strip that you want for the majority of paper beads. And this is what we're going to be using today. So, if you're cutting it from strips, it's a little tedious. If you start with an entire sheet of paper, it's easy to make a grid like this, or this way, whichever way you want. You can also look online. There are some places where you can download a template, a paper bead template, for different sizes and shapes of beads, and then just print it, you know, scan it your computer and print it onto the back of whatever paper you want to use. That's an option for you. But if you are pretty much analog, <laughs> you know, that's just a little too much for you, I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. So let's start with 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. This is just a standard letter size sheet of paper. And I want my strips long this way, so I'm going to need to make my marks on the eight and a half side, right down here. So I'm going to take my ruler. See, there we are, eight and a half. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to now I'm going to scooch in so you can see. I want one inch beads, so I'm going to make a mark, just a little mark, all along the bottom, every inch. And then when I get to the end, see I'm going to have that little half inch space right there? That's okay. Now, I'm going to rotate my paper like this and do the same thing to this end. ruler, start at the left, left edge, and then make a mark every one inch. Got it? All right, now, what that does, I know it's really hard to see, but you've got a mark every inch along the bottom except on the right hand edge it's a half inch. Rotate the paper, same thing. The right hand edge, it's a half inch. Now if you want, you could go ahead and draw your lines so that you know you have a grid like this, but you don't really need to. You can just start cutting. And here's what you do. You take your little cutter thing or your straight edge and your blade, whatever you want to use. I just like to use this thing. And I am going to, I've got two pieces because I want to do two at the same time. I'm going to start on the right hand side, doesn't matter really where, this is just where I always start. I'm going to put my little, this is that little half inch mark, I'm putting it right in my groove where I cut. And then at the top, I'm putting the edge of the paper. So I'm going from my half inch mark at the bottom to the edge of the paper at the top, and I'm going to cut. And that cuts off that little, this, is, this will be a right triangle because it's a little end piece. And you can save that for another bead later. I'm going to rotate my paper and then do the same. The bottom, I've got the little half inch hash mark right in my cutting groove. And then at the top, I've got the very edge of the paper in the cutting groove. Pull it down, 
and cut that little half inch piece off. Now those are out of the way, so everything else is going to be an inch, right? And what you do, what I usually do is I hold the bottom one and pivot the top. So I've got, here's one mark in my cutting groove here, and here's one mark in my cutting groove here. And then there is my isosceles triangle. Now hold the top, pivot the bottom. There's my little hash mark in the cutting groove and my hash mark, which is also the edge of the paper, in the cutting groove up there, and then cut. And then you just keep doing that. You alternate between holding the bottom, pivoting the top, and holding the top, pivoting the bottom. It doesn't matter, just make your triangles. I probably just made it a lot more complicated <laughs> than it really should be. <laughs> but just know that I was trying to help. <laughs> I really was. I really was trying. Y'all, I saw these videos because, like, when I first get up in the morning, when I first wake up, usually the first thing I do is I pick up my phone, hoping to find something interesting enough to pull me out of my sleep, right? So I check my email. I usually start off reading the Daily Skim. Do you read the Daily Skim? Okay, I'll put a link down in the video description so you can go get that if you want. But it's like a little newsletter you sign up for. It's totally free. You don't have to download the app because it's not free. But just the skim newsletter you sign up for and it's free and then every morning like at 5 30 in your inbox you get a little digest of news world news so i kind of feel like i know what's going on like i understand the whole brexit thing now and and you know i'm just like so in the know sort of <laughs> so yeah i read the daily skim <laughs> and then you know, I'll check, like, um, to see if there's any Facebook comments I need to respond to or, um, you know, what's going on in YouTube. And that's how I came across this because I was um, just checking out my YouTube early in the morning and then saw this. And then, of course, after I got up and had my coffee, I have to, like, go to my computer and do that whole routine all over again because I forget <laughs> all the stuff that I saw and read while I was laying in bed. <clears throat> so I have, like, two morning routines that are exactly the same, just about 30 minutes apart. <laughs> and that's how I roll. So there we go. Okay, so now I've got this handful of isosceles triangles, right? Exactly the same length on two sides and then straight across the bottom. That's what we're going to use. Alright, to start off with, I'm just going to use one of each color and um, just so that you, and they're contrasting, just so you can kind of see better what I'm doing. And let's just zoom in so we can really see. Here's my two triangles. I'm going to use a glue stick. You can use whatever you got. I'm going to use a glue stick. Put just a little glue right there. Glue these two together. You can do them, you know, match them up exactly. It's actually a little better if you pivot your strips so that there's just a tiny bit showing there and a tiny bit showing there. So just a smidge, just that tea tiny bit. That actually is a little bit better. And I'll show you why. Okay, if you're using patterned paper and you know you've got one side that's plain and one side that's pretty, you want your pretty side down. These would be the back sides, back sides up. So whatever is on this bottom side, that's going to be what's showing. Now, to start, you're going to take, I always start just like this, where I've got the piece on top angled down, the bottom piece angled to my left. I'm going to take, start with the left piece, I'm going to fold it over, and it's kind of natural to want to line it up 
with the edge, but don't do that. Every time you wrap, you are going to want your tail to be centered between the, um, to be centered on itself. See the blue strip? I don't want it like this. I want this piece to come out centered on itself. Boy, I'm doing a really bad job of explaining this, but you're gonna catch on, because watch. So, I take my first one over and under. And see, I kind of look right here and make sure it's not like that, not like that. I want it centered on itself. So over, under. Now, take my pink piece and do the same thing. Over, and see it's kind of centered and under and make sure it comes out centered over here. This is all there is to it, y'all. You just keep going, alternating the left one over and under, the bottom one over and under, just like that. Uh, you can do over, over, flip and do that. That just confuses me. I like this. I don't have to flip it. I don't lose track of where I am. I just do left, over, under, bottom, over, under. And that makes it really easy. You see how it's starting to weave itself? Yeah, and all you do is just over and under and keep everything as centered as you can. When you get down to the bottom, I usually use some kind of a wet glue. You can use a glue stick if you have one that you trust. I don't have trust issues with glue sticks. Okay, really? There we go. If you lose track of where you are, you want to make sure that the bottom one, turn it over. This one's next. Over, under. And then this one, over, under, kind of, sort of. Smooth out your glue. And there is your tidy little woven, uh, whatever it was, pillow, pillow bead. That's what I kept wanting to say, pocket journal. That's not right, pillow bead. I've got a wet sponge here <laughs> when I'm making beads. So I do this to wipe the glue off my fingers, and then I have a little dry towel that I use. Otherwise, my beads get all gluey. Okay, yeah, I did just kind of glue that to the bottom of my dish. Okay, well anyway, you get the idea, right? So, that's your pillow bead. It's flat at this point. If you really want to pillow it up, you just take your sides and squeeze. And then you can make it as poofy as you want. I mean, it can go super poofy or just a little poofy. I really like mine just a little poofy. And then you'll want to take a pokey tool and make sure that you have a hole going diagonally. Usually it's there, um, just naturally forms itself and it's fine. It's not till you do these little beads like this that it gets difficult. So that's all there is to these woven pillow beads. And I think they're really cool. I've done some um, bigger ones. Let's see. That's a good one. This is a nice one. Let's see. Oops. And a one inch bead might be a little bit bigger than you really want to work with. Um, you know, I don't often need a bead that size but it was just easier to demonstrate a one inch. These half inch, now do you see how this has gotten almost kind of round? That's because I used several layers. Should I show you how to do that? I probably should. Okay, let's do that. I've got some half inch strips. And again, the number of layers you're gonna need is just gonna depend on the width that you're using, the length, and the weight of the paper. So experiment till you get it right. This one, I think I used three. So let's go one, 
two, three pink, and three blue. Contrasting just so that you can see what I'm doing. Take my glue stick and glue these together just at the top and then make sure that they're lined up all the way down. Try that again. They may get out of line just a little bit. You know, you might have one that's slightly wider and that's okay. Just center them up as best you can. This is just all about centering. And you do not want to glue these all the way down together. Don't do that. Just that little dab of glue at the top is all you need. These have to be able to move freely in order to wrap nicely. So you can't glue them together all the way down. Now, I'm going to put a dab of glue here and here. And let's just, let's do those. Let's line this up exactly. You know, the other ones, I had to tilt a little bit. Let's see what happens if you don't tilt it. I'll show you. You can do it either way. Um, as long as you keep them centered. Now remember, if these strips are patterned, you want the pattern that you want to show is going to be on the bottom. The bottom is the outside of the bead. This that we're seeing here is going to be the inside. So bottom is the pretty part. I'm going to start with my left hand one, just like I did before. I'm going to go over and under. Don't line it up even with the edge, tilt it down a little bit because that's what it's going to take to keep it centered on itself. You want it centered on itself. So over and under, and you can kind of see right here where it comes out. If it's centered, that looks good. Over and under. See, everything's centered and nice and even, right? I have a feeling I've got glare. It's really hard for me to tell. There we go. Now, the left one over and under. The right one over and under. Center it up. Keep your strips together as much as you can. Sometimes, like I said, the, they're going to show, and that's okay. Um, that really, to me, just gives it an extra, more bulky, Larry look, and I kind of like it. Left, over, under, bottom, over, under. I am pulling everything snug. And holding it. You can put a little dab of glue here as you go if that helps you. Since I'm always constantly, you know, adjusting mine to keep them centered, I don't really do that. So there we go. And you can see that because of the, the extra bulk, because of our layers, that it's kind of almost rounding the bead out. Which I think looks really neat. And when it gets to about right here, 
this is my left one. I've got three strips in there. I will kind of separate these and put some glue on them, whether it's liquid glue or glue stick, whatever. Glue stick might be easier. Over, under, and then same thing here. Oops. Over, under. And there we have it. Was I in frame or out of frame that whole time? I should have checked. Well, anyway, hopefully <laughs> you get the gist of it. So those are pillow beads. That is a bead. You don't need any special tool for it. Just cut you out some triangles and, you know, pay attention. If you've got right triangles and not isosceles, you can still do it, but you're going to have to finagle up here a little bit more. Um, it can be kind of confusing. And like I said, pretty much all I use are right triangles because they're easier to cut out. And if you've done beads before, that may be the case for you. Go for it. But if you're just kind of a beginner, it really helps to start off with the right kind of triangle. So, um, yeah, there's that. Okay, I think that's all I have. Um, I've been making a lot of beads lately. You know, I just get on these uh, kicks, <laughs> I guess. And I make beads all different sizes and shapes. I made some little teeny saucer beads which are typically not my favorite those little teeny tiny ones yeah. and just bulking up on regular beads i don't know why i don't have a plan for these yet but that's kind of how i roll i make the stuff and then later figure out what to do with it that's just me so that's all i have for today thank you so much for watching the end <laughs>